All right, guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here, and today we have some very interesting things, starting from Unreal Engine 5.1 got released, and this is the release note, and we have something very much interesting and probably game-changing, is that they're adding the improvements in Lumen, Nanite, and Virtual Shadow maps. That's right. If you don't know what Lumen is, it's basically a competitor for ray tracing, and, well, it seems like Lumen doesn't really require any hardware for our... Uh, you know, generating, you know, realistic lightning, unlike ray tracing, as we all know. And if you look into some comparison here, this is the first uh, image we're looking at, this is the before. And as you can see, the lumen wasn't really noticeable at first. But now, if you look into it, that's, that's the real life lightning. And this is more of a broader picture. So, yeah, I mean, it looks way better than ray tracing anyway. And it doesn't really require any, you know... Hardware, so that's game changing. We all wouldn't know about that. So, global illumination is very much gonna be accurate. As you can see right here, it's very much accurate than before. Yeah, it did struggle before, but now it's looking like it doesn't. And the lightning seems very much d more defined. In this picture, you can just tell the difference how Lumen is w working properly, and it just looks very realistic. And the reflections, well, as you can see, the high-quality transl translucency reflections that got enabled with the latest patch, I guess. And they look very realistic. Just look at that. It's it's improvement. Huge improvement. And now they've also added this new support that is Lumen Reflections now support single layer water with a reflection force to mirror. So, yeah. More realism they're adding into the Lumen uh, technology here, and I guess this is going to be very much game-changing in Unreal Engine 5, basically. With the update, now you can enjoy all of this. They've also improved Nanite improvements, and if you look into it, it's just a brief... Or, I shouldn't zoom in because it's very much pixelated. But, yeah, they're just improved a lot in Nanite department here. They also added this support here, the two-sided. For the uh, materials that we're going to be using here. Uh, Max blend mode and world position offset. Which is still in beta. But yeah, they're adding it. Pixel depth offset. More information will be coming, of course. Uh, the performance characteristics of these features can be found in the Nana documentation. So yeah, basically more impro improvements and more information that you can look into. And there are plenty more to discuss about. The link will be in the description for this patch node or release node that you can look into and find out what other improvements they've added but the key factor here is the lumen the, uh, and the nanites and of course virtual shadow maps these are gonna be very much game changer for unreal engine 5 which is amazing next up we have momama underscore us bringing in this asus psu table and if you look into it there is literally a well a recommendation P psu for each and every GPUs we're looking at. So RTX 4090, uh, if you're pairing with Intel i5 or AMD Ryzen 5, you will require at least 850 watts. If you're if you're going for i7 or Ryzen 7, 1000, i9 or Ryzen 9, going for 1000 again. And if you're going for Intel HEDT or AMD Threadripper, it's gonna be 1200 watts. So it's gonna be very much power hungry, that's for sure. We also got RTX 4080, and it seems like it's gonna be a little bit 100 watts for this case, 750 watts. Uh, and, and it remains the same for i7 and Ryzen 7, 750 watts. For i9 and Ryzen 9, it's gonna be 850 watts. And of course, uh, Threadripper and HEDT will go down to 1000 watts for RTX 4080. We also got 7900 XT, and here comes the efficiency part here. If you look into it, 7900 XTX, going at 850 with the i5 and Ryzen 5. But we're looking at 850 again with i7 and Ryzen 7 compared to 4090, which was 1000. So there's a big change, change here, which is great. Uh, I guess AMD is getting more efficient. I mean, they were always the efficient one, but yeah. And i9 and Ryzen 9 remains the same, 1000 watts recommendation and 1200 watts. That's going to be also for the Threadripper and HDT. For 7900 XT, it's going to be 750 watts. For both i5 and i7 or Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7. For i9 and Ryzen 9, it's going to be 850 watts. Again, very similar case. So I guess it just makes sense. I mean, 
I guess 750 watts is the minimum that you should go in 2022 or 2023 because it's coming up. So yeah, I mean, for future proofing, you should go a little bit higher, you know. Intel HDT and AMD Threadripper, of course, is going to be 1000. So yeah, these are the listing and these are the previous generation. We don't want to look into that now, but main theme here is that RTX 4090 and 4080 and the 7900 XTX and 7900 XT getting their power limits or PSU recommendation basically from Asus and well you can still go a little bit lower but I mean for future proofing I guess they're gonna go with this kind of chart next up we have something interesting happening and basically Nvidia Taiwan Twitter page got hacked basically and now they're promoting Dogecoin <laughs> which is <laughs> kind of funny Dogecoin 2022 hackathons for this reason hodlers will receive rewards I'm not gonna promote that but yeah basically Nvidia Taiwan is promoting that and probably they're not because they got hacked. So that's kind of funny. And basically, if you look into the source here, it has been suspended basically. So yeah, I think things are getting, you know, took took care of. So yeah. Next up, we have AMD detailing more about the Hyper RX, which is going to be a one-click performance boost technology, and they're bringing in here. And yeah, basically, it's a one-click, which will enable basically the super resolution. A radiant boost and anti-lag sometimes I think about that and that is that we don't really need radiant boost in certain games or even anti-lag maybe super resolution is gonna be very much useful but yeah sometimes anti-lag I mean yeah for competitive titles yeah sure anti-lag is very much good boost completely unnecessary I believe so yeah they're bringing in this preset here that will literally one click performance boost which will basically enable all these two or three uh, technologies here which then again we don't really need all of it but yeah that's for sure that if you enable the anti-lag you would see some huge frame timing differences and they have this uh, chart here that is dying light 2 getting 11 milliseconds with hyper rx on versus off its 30 ms so yeah there's a quite improvement here and also in terms of frame rate it's going to also it's going to be you know different because obviously you use using super resolution fsr the uplift is going to be quite big as you can see 166 fps compared to 90 fps which is very much close to double approximately double not quite but yeah so yeah that's the one click basically just a preset nothing really interesting but still i mean if you don't want to look into everything just turn on hyper rx i guess now lastly we have a very much interesting thing uh not a thing and use and that is rx 7900 series getting a comparison here with the rtx 4080 i believe this is the 7900 xtx or even both let's look into it so yeah basically they have this performance here this is not a comparison this is just a 7900 xtx 7900 xt and 6950 xt so in russian evil village 7900 XTX. I'm just gonna only use XTX because it's really hard to spell all of it. So XTX getting 190, XT is getting 157, and 6950 is getting 124. So yeah, quite a bit amount of FPS gain here. And by the way, it's the same pricing. 6950. Oh, sorry about that. 6950 was a bit premium. So yeah, I mean, still, it's a it's a quite good deal, you know. Call of Duty is getting. 139 fps versus 117 for xt and 6950 is getting 92 and of course cyberpunk notorious right still not bad we, we, we've already seen uh it was getting rtx 4080 was getting like around 87 right and 7900 xt is getting 72 by the way it's also 200 less so not bad yeah not bad Still not winning, but still not bad. Watch Dark Legion, 100 FPS again. Quite demanding, yet good FPS. Like that. And that's the, probably the FSR on and off. So, yeah, I mean, you will get some boosts in performance, but the rasterization matters the most, which is nice. Well, we already know this, but I still have to mention it. And that is 7900 XT remaining the same 2 into 8 pin power plug compared to 12 into plus 4 pin power plug, which. RTX 4080 is gonna have and the size remains the same maybe for the width but not for the length the length a little bit higher 287 right versus 267 still lower than RTX 4080 surprisingly and yeah it's the 2.5 slot size card 
versus RTX 4080 getting 3.0 slot size, which is huge. And feature differences, well, the main feature is DisplayPort 2.1. That is completely missing from NVIDIA, all of, all of the series of cards. So yeah, that's going to enable a lot. Basically 8K 165 and 4K 480 hertz, which is a substantial amount of performance there. Because yeah, you can enjoy 480 hertz only with AMD now, which is crazy. And that's, I don't know, it's going to be a big, you know, game breaking, but I don't know. Or game changer, game breaking, who says that? Anyway, alright, that is it for today. I mean, it seems like RTX 4080 or even 4090, in terms of performance, won't struggle, obviously. But in terms of features, I wonder who's going to win. I really wonder. Only time will tell, because we still need to see how well or how bad, we don't know. The RT, uh, not the RTX, the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT performs. We need to see that first before making any kind of judgment. But in terms of features, I don't know. AMD might win. So we'll see about that.